M2 is here, and if past is at all prologue, that means M2 Pro, M2 Max, M2 Ultra, and maybe the cherry on top that would be M2 Extreme, because still no new Mac Pro, not even a preview. Not today, Satan. Damn. Seeing what we got really is one of the best ways to figure out what we're gonna get, starting with M1, which Apple debuted in November of 2020, followed by M2, which just got announced this month in June of 2022, which is, yes, 20 months later and almost two years from when Tim Cook first announced, we envision some amazing new products and transitioning to our own custom silicon is what will enable us to bring them to life. Except for that Mac Pro, which more on in a minute. I've already posted a full deep dive on M2, which I'll link in the description right below the subscribe button. But my guess, my hunch is that it took Apple longer than they would have liked, longer than they expected to go from M1 to M2, thanks in large part to the 2020s being just the Picard season two of decades, at least so far. I am way too old for your bullshit. But M2 is a really solid follow-up to M1. And I know, sure, some people who've become super fixated on perf might grumble at the generation to generation lift there specifically, but perf is kinda, sorta, dare I say, easy. Like, if you really want to win the benchmark LARP crown on YouTube or Reddit, all you have to do is goose voltage like Intel's been doing. Oh, I'm a Viking. I'm, I'm really a Viking. But what Apple's done is way, way harder. They've increased perf considerably on the E cores and variably on the P cores, depending on the latency of the workload because cache, but at even greater efficiency, which is really, really important, not just for long battery life or performance while on battery, but for smaller, nicer enclosures, no or very quiet fans, and especially to keep base frequencies as the core counts grow, which is something Intel hasn't been able to do. Now, there are really two ways to improve chipsets, time and space. Time is like literally time. Every year to 18 months or whatever, there's typically a new generation, like. A14 to A15, or now M1 to M2. Apple basically pushes every single part of the IP forward, at least in some way. And that could include process shrink, like M1 going to five nanometer, or process improvement, like M2 going to five nanometer plus. It could include architectural improvements, like M1's Ice Storm and Firestorm cores being revved to M2's Blizzard and Avalanche cores. It could also include new features, like the hypervisor and Rosetta acceleration on M1 or the ProRes media engines on M2. And all of that, all of that takes time, is limited by time. While space is also literally space, as in every few months over the last two years, Apple has increased the size of M1 to Pro and Max and then to Ultra. And they did it by adding and adjusting CPU cores, doubling GPU cores, doubling IO controllers, and then doubling them again, even using an interposer to effectively fuse two Max dies into one massive SOC, and all that takes space. It's limited by space, as in physics. And so that just has to mean that Apple will pretty much apply the exact same formula to M2 that they just applied to M1, right? Well, kinda. See, I don't think it means what most people think it means, and yes, let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. M1 is based on A14 generation silicon IP, but M1 isn't just A14 with more cores. It's also its own whole entire fully realized chipset that spun A14 generation IP into something uniquely suited for ultra low power Macs. It added those Mac specific accelerators and IO controllers. It amped up the memory and storage systems. It was a lot of work in its own right. In other words, more than just more. Likewise, M1 Pro and M1 Max weren't just M1 with more and adjusted cores. They also added A15 generation IP in the form of those ProRes media engines, the ones that Apple has started building out for the 2019 Mac Pro with Afterburner, but shrunk down and sped up by placing them on die. Also LPDDR5 RAM for faster memory bandwidth and multiple display support. So yes, also more than just more. And M1 Max had that interposer so Apple could merge them like Voltron like Gladiator Voltron, if it only had two parts, into M1 Ultra, literally doubling the dies and all the IP 
but thanks to that interposer, still more than just more, because Metal, for example, sees those two massive 32 core GPUs as an even more massive fur 64 core GPU fed by just redonkulous amounts of unified memory and bandwidth. And I get it, I totally get it, because that makes it trivial to think, and maybe even true, that M2 Pro and M2 Max will just be adjusted CPU and double GPU and memory and whatever. Like, for the M2 Pro from 2 E cores and 4 P cores to 2 E cores and 8 P cores, from 10 GPU to 20 GPU, from 24 gigabytes of RAM to 48 gigabytes of RAM, same fifth generation A and E, but double the ProRes engine capability, at least to match the M1 Pro's throughput, because the media engine in M2 is currently around half the one in M1 Pro. Also from two to three USB and Thunderbolt controllers, also to match M1 Pro. Then for M2 Max, pretty much exactly the same thing, but 40 GPU, 96 gigabytes of RAM, and double again the ProRes encode engines to match the M2 Max. And yeah, maybe. But because M2 is more efficient, maybe Apple could do more with the CPU, like four and eight E cores versus P cores, or two and 10. And maybe, just like they brought some A15 generation IP and additional features to M1 Pro and M1 Max, like those ProRes engines and LP5 memory, maybe we could see some A16 generation IP or some entirely new features in M2 Pro and M2 Max. And yeah, I very much doubt it would be ARM v9 because that's both a bigger conversation and just a way less important one given Apple's existing IP compared to other licensees, but something that helps enable better pro solutions and solve more pro problems. Like M2 Ultra, it's pretty safe to say it would still double M1 Max, but maybe, maybe like we saw two M1 Max dies fuse into M1 Ultra, we'll see up to four M2 Max dies fuse, like the Constructicons into Devastator, only missing the cement mixer, whatever or just run in parallel for something even more than ultra, something even more extreme. Point being, we don't know. We really don't know at this point. Everything everyone is saying or charting or even leaking right now is somewhere between informed analysis and full on fanfic because Apple doesn't design commodity chipsets just to be crammed into rando bead blasted aluminum boxes. They design very specific silicon to deliver very exacting capabilities for each and every Mac in the lineup from the just launched MacBook Air to the still Judge Judy tapping that wristwatch, where is it Mac Pro? Pretty much exactly like today's sponsor, Henson and their razors. They're not gimmicky, they're not complicated, they're simple, they're precise, they're Canadian. Produced at an aerospace machine shop, family owned for 20 years where they've made parts for everything from the ISS to the Mars rover, so they know literally an unearthly amount about quality. That's how Henson was able to build the best shaving angle, 30 degrees, right into the head design, which makes it super easy to shave well. Not like safety razors that can nick or cut or irritate you if you get the angle or pressure or direction even slightly wrong. With Henson, the blade sticks out only 27 microns and the built-in channels make it simple to remove hair and cream with a quick rinse. And as someone who used to go through packets and packets of neon razors and all the waste that went along with them, using Henson is like a dream. And the best part, the absolute best part, is that this aerospace quality razor is designed to work with standard recyclable blades. In fact, if you click the link below and use code Rene Ritchie, they'll even send you 100 blades free with your razor. So click the link below and use code Rene Ritchie to get a free 100 pack of blades when you purchase your razor. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so does hitting up this video for way more on M2 and Apple Silicon. All the info, all the details, just hit it up and I'll see you in the next video.